So it looks like Casey Anthony's name is back in the headlines once again. This is on a Papal exclusive. This time it is from her mother, Cindy Anthony. And she's reflecting back on the high profile case, saying that her daughter put her through hell. Okay, it's been almost 14 years since the disappearance of little Kaylee Anthony. Okay, this all happened in July of 2008. Casey was arrested for the disappearance, and for nearly six months, Cindy and her husband, George, conducted a nationwide search for their granddaughter, and they followed up on countless leads. In December of 2008, Kaylee's remains were found in a wooded area near their family home. Casey was charged with murder, and her 2011 trial was a media circus. There was at least 40 million people that watched some of the testimony. Casey was acquitted of murder and manslaughter charges on July the 5th of 2011, but she was convicted of four accounts of lying to police. The trial was full of bombshells. Casey and her defense team accused her dad of essaying her, a claim that he totally denied. And her mother, Cindy, did not escape it either. And she even testified that she was the one that was doing incriminate searches on their computer. And those searches were being blamed on her daughter, Casey. Okay, last week, Cindy spoke out in a very rare interview talking to a TV host on Crime Scene Confidential that is on the ID channel. She recalled the defense's claim that Kaylee drowned in the family pool and Cindy Anthony got visibly irritated, saying, what the F was she thinking? I'm going to go into that. I'm going to actually play as said in this interview. I'm also going to play the highlights of the court as it happened that she is referring to. Okay, a source close to the family says that Cindy Anthony has a lot of resentment towards her daughter. She is still angry a lot of the time. She went on to say that Cindy was a loving grandmother who had withstood family trauma that no one should ever have to deal with. So when she starts talking about Casey and Kaylee, she gets really upset even now. Cindy now has like a rocky road kind of relationship with her daughter. They didn't speak for many years, but they have just recently begun communicating sporadically. At first, Cindy just wanted answers. She wanted to know what had happened, why this had happened. She wanted Casey to explain the hell that she put everyone through. But now she has finally come to realize that she is never going to get any straight answers from her daughter. So what's the point? But does Cindy think that her daughter was guilty of murdering her granddaughter? This family insider says that's a tough question. Sometimes she wavers around. Now Casey's dad, George, is very steadfast and totally believes that she did something wrong. But with Cindy, it's like a big question mark. It's mostly she's just sad about the way things turned out. I overheard Casey on crying, telling my son that the, ba the um, babysitter had kidnapped Kaylee. And when I heard those words, I just, she was sitting on the bed and I grabbed her shoulders and I said, what the hell are you talking about? Why the heck didn't you tell me sooner? And what's wrong with you? Why didn't you say anything? I How would you describe her demeanor when she came into the home? Somebody else spoke Combative. What do you recall about the, the smell of the car? Just that it was very potent, very strong. A smell Lee Anthony says he mentioned to his sister, who now sits a few steps away in a defendant's chair. 
watching her brother testify on, against her. What did your sister say about getting Kaylee? When we could, get, when you could get Kaylee? Tomorrow. Was it always tomorrow? It seemed that way. I ran outside to talk on the phone, and I called the sheriff's department, and that's when I said, "I need them here ASAP." On July fifteenth, two thousand eight. Cindy Anthony made a recorded call to 911 that was received by the Orange County Sheriff's Office at 2141 20 hours. The recording is a true and accurate representation of the call. The parties have agreed to this fact and it should be considered as true in your deliberations. You may publish. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> I called a little bit ago. The deputy sheriff said, I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. Her, her mother finally admitted that she's been missing. Okay, what is what someone is, here now? Okay, what is the address that you're calling from? 4937 Hope Spring Drive. We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. 4937 what? Hope Spring, H-O-P-E-S-P-R-I-N-G, Drive, Orlando. My daughter finally admitted that the baby's in the store. I need to find her. Your daughter admitted that your ba the baby is where? But the babysitter took her a month ago that, that my daughter's been looking for. I told you my daughter was missing for a month. I just found her today, but I can't find my granddaughter. And she just admitted to me that she's been trying to find her herself. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. Okay, what is the three-year-old's name? Kaylee, C-A-Y-L-E-E, -E, Anthony. Kaylee Anthony? Yes. Okay, is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. How long has she been missing for? I have not seen her since the 7th of June. What is her date of birth? Um, 8, 8, 9, 2000, oh God, she's 3, she's 2005. So it's Karen's missing. Karen's missing. Katie says Danny took her a month ago. She was yeah. missing for a month. Okay, I just can I need I, I understand can you just can you calm down for me for just a minute and just I need to know what's going on, okay? I'm gonna try and talk I'm so what is we can do <laughs> Is your is your daughter there? I have a phone with them. Is your daughter there? Yes. Can I speak with her? Do you mind if I speak with her? Thank you. I called them two hours ago. They haven't gotten here. Can you speak? Finally, and this is a very short girl month ago. Ma'am. Ma'am. Okay, it's very serious. They want to talk to you. Answer the question. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. Well, can you can you tell me what's going on a little bit? I'm sorry? Can you tell me a little bit what's going on? My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. And you know who has her? I know who has her. I've tried to contact her. I actually received a phone call today now from a number that is no longer in service. I did get to speak to my daughter for about a moment, about a minute. Okay, did you guys call and report a vehicle stolen? Um... Yes, my mom did. Okay, okay so is it a vehicle stolen too? No, this is my vehicle. What vehicle was stolen? Um, it's a 98 Pontiac Sunfire. Okay, I have deputies on the way to you right now for that. But now you're now you're three old. Okay, your three old daughter's missing. Kaylee Anthony. Yes. White Kaylee female. Anthony. Yes, white female. Three years old. Eight nine two thousand five. Her date of birth. Yes. And you last saw her a month ago. 31 days, from 31 days. Who has her? Do you have, do you have a name? Her name is Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. Who is that? Babysitter? She's, she's been my nanny for about a year and a half, almost two years. And why, why are you calling now? Why didn't you call 31 days ago? I've been looking for her and have gone through other resources to try to find her, which is stupid. Okay. Can you can you give me the name of the the nanny again? Like spell it out for me. Zenaida, Z E N, A I, D A. Last name. Fernandez. Fernandez. Hyphen Gonzalez.
I think the officers are here. Okay. The officers are there? Yes. Okay, hold on a second. Don't hang up with me yet. I need you. Okay. We had little Kaylee in 2005, and um, she was a joy. She was the light of our life. You know, you feel the love of your own child and then the love of the child that they made, and it's just, it's just unbelievable. Just, just a great, great time together. She was my little buddy, and words can't describe the feelings that I had for her. That day when that photograph was taken, you actually um, videotaped her on that day, did you not? Yes. Okay. And uh, I'd like to bring up the video so you can see. Mrs. Anthony, um, how much had Kay Kaylee grown since that? since this video was taken? She's grown quite a bit. Okay. And how do you know this video was taken in early uh, 2007? Um, because the date stamp on it says um, April of 2007. Mrs. Anthony, what is the photograph, the pic that you're looking at? It shows me tr attempting to go around Kaylee as I usually did. I mean, we used to have Kaylee sit once she got to the platform with her feet on the first step in the water. And then whoever was with her would get around that way. We would get in the pool before her and then receive her. Right after her indictment, they were requesting, you know, capital punishment. So, of course, to me, they're the number one enemy because they want to kill my daughter. And now not only have I lost my granddaughter, they want to take forever away my daughter and not just put her away. They want to execute her. A grand jury hands up an indictment for murder. And from the courtroom to the Orange County Sheriff's Office, where she was just brought this afternoon, Western News crews are there. We're the body that, for the first time, officially accused Casey Anthony of murdering her daughter, Kaylee. Count one is a capital count. A capital count for premeditated first-degree murder, a charge that could bring with it the death penalty upon conviction. December 11th, the day that they found the remains was, you know, will be forever etched in my head as far as where we were when we got the phone call. Oh, I remember certain aspects of that day. But the biggest thing, I mean, it was like this overwhelming punch in the gut. And all I can do is just pray that it wasn't her. But I also prayed that if it was her, that I would get answers. Peter with Orange County, and I had the route today that included the Anthony's home. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I went down to the school and came back, and when I was coming back, I stopped between the two swamp areas there. If you're heading back out towards the main road uh, on the left-hand side in an area, I noticed something that looked white, and there was a uh, like a gray bag down in there. I don't know what it is. I'm not telling you it's, you know, it's Kaylee or anything of that nature. On December the 11th of 2008, sir, did you find what turned out to be the remains of Kaylee Marie Anthony? Yes, sir. And did you find those remains the same place you had last seen them or were they somewhere else? I had never been to where that bag was, so I would have no idea. I cannot answer that question, sir. It was in August, it was flooded. December, it wasn't. It was much more grown up in August. It was much less in December. I have no idea. Did you ever, after August the 13th and prior to December the 11th, renew contact with law enforcement to ask what's going on with founding, finding the skull that I found in August? No, sir. You just let it go? Yes, sir. 
And when you went back in there on December the 11th, sir, and you saw this coal, did you do anything with your meter reader stick? Yes, sir. Uh, I was standing behind it. So I was looking at it from behind and I still didn't think it was real. So I very gently took it and put it into the right eye socket and I gently pivoted it up and I looked down and I realized what it was and I set it down as gently as I could and went up and called my uh, area supervisor. And there's no question in your mind that you lifted it up with a stick to look at it. I gently pivoted it up. I never took it off of the ground, sir. Well, it wasn't stuck in the mud, was it? No, sir. Wasn't stuck in anything, was it? After finding what I found, the shock of it, I just really can't tell you. I mean, that was a very horrific thing for me to find, obviously. Did you ask one of the deputies to arrive if you were still entitled to the 200 and $25,000 or $55,000 reward? No, sir. Do you have any discussions about that entitlement to reward at all? I really don't remember, to be honest with you. Did you also tell Deputy Porter that you wanted to keep it quiet so your ex-wife wouldn't find out about the money? I might have said that jokingly. I just simply try to do the right thing, and for my efforts to try and help and be a good citizen, I basically got chewed out for half an hour and was just called horrendous things. You're telling me now that you completely deny making a phone call to your son at all in November? My son was mistaken about that phone call. That phone call never happened. I called him on December 11th, and I told him on December 11th that I had found something and that if he looked on television that night, he'd be able to see me for the first time since he was eight years old. I never denied making that phone call. I never technically found anything. I saw something that looked like a skull. You're making it sound like I was standing over top of it. That never happened. Uh, it's, it's the same skull you told us a little while ago that you were 100% certain was a skull. Right, but I also said I did not know what it was made of because I never got any closer to it in August than maybe as you said, on the 13th of eight feet. I never stood over top of that, sir. Were you instructed by anybody to not talk about the August reports and finding? No, sir. You lifted the bag just to see what was in the bag? Yes, sir. And then you see the skull, and then you lift it? Held the bag out. Uh, after like the third shake, the contents of the bag shifted. And I looked down at my feet, and that's when I discovered the skull uh, that basically at my feet. On December the 11th, when you, after you found these remains, had you been working the day before? No, sir. You have the day off, in fact? <coughs> yes, sir. And was there a special purpose why you had the day off? Yes, sir. What was it? The uh, clutch went out of my vehicle. You had to have car repairs? Yes, sir. And, sir, did you uh, have a need for some money on that day, the 10th of December? Yes, sir. Over $1,000 you needed for truck repairs? And it's the very next day, December the 11th, that you go back to Suburban and you make this fine. Yes, sir. Why the heck didn't she tell us? Why didn't she call somebody? None of this would have happened. We, none of this would have happened. What the heck's going on? And it's like, oh my gosh, she put us through hell. You learned in December of 2008 that the remains of your granddaughter were found. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What effect did that have on you when you learned that Kaylee's remains had been found? A deep, a deep hurt inside. Tears. 
the whole gamut of just an emotional loss, a breakdown inside of me, and seeing what my wife and my son went through. Up to that moment, had you held out the hope that Kaylee would be found alive? Absolutely. Every day from July 15th until the day we were told it was Kaylee. In January of 2009, you went, I'll, I'll give you a moment. Need a break, man? No, sir, I need to get through this. I need to have okay. something inside of me to get through this. Do you need to break the staff? No, sir, I'm fine. January, oh, just let me know when you're, when you're okay. I'm okay, sir. On January 22nd of 2009, Mr. Anthony, you went and got a gun, didn't you? Yes. My understanding of the events of this date are that Mr. Anthony went and got a gun that he did so with the purpose, I believe he will testify, he did so with the purpose of forcing people who he believed might know something about who killed Kaylee, specifically friends or boyfriends of the defendant, with the intention of forcing them to reveal what they knew and then taking his own life. It is revealed in the suicide note, and I believe he will testify that that's what happened. The defense has brought up the suicide. I do, so the court knows, intend for him to identify his suicide note. And in my case, I do intend to offer it because it shows that on January 22nd of 2009, this man had no idea who killed Kaylee Marie Anthony. And it rebuts implications by the defense that he did is directly contradictory to the defense's argument and it is proof and i do have case law when we uh, try to admit the note but at this point the circumstances of the suicide <coughs> were raised by defense counsel when he asked the question about that event and i believe i'm entitled to go into that on the <coughs> 22nd of january of 2009 this is um, approximately six weeks after the remains were found. Did you travel to a hotel in Daytona Beach for the purposes of taking your own life? Yes, sir. Why, on that particular day, did you decide to take your life? Why that particular day I picked out, I, I really don't know. All I know is my emotional state, even through today, is uh, is very hard to accept that I don't have a granddaughter anymore. But for that particular day, I don't know, I just felt like the right time to go and be with Kaylee. Did so, you uh, call relatives and, perhaps not literally, but say goodbye? Say your last goodbyes to them. Oh, well. I wanted to talk to my parents, uh, my sisters. I know I called my son and, and my wife and just said that I was okay. Um, yes, to say goodbye for the last time. Did, did any of them try to get you to tell where you were? Do you, do you remember the... the the content of the conversation? No, because really, I, I was supposed to be going to a meeting that day, and uh, I just, I don't know, I just decided that was the time for me to get away from all this, to spend time with Kaylee. You know, if I would have found Kaylee drowned in the pool, I would have been de devastated and blamed myself for the rest of my life. On June 16th, 2008, Casey was home with Kaylee, and so was her father. 
early morning hours, the exact time is not known. It could have been early afternoon, early morning. Actually, it was the early morning hours. George Anthony approached Casey and started yelling at her. Where's Kaylee? Where's Kaylee? They began to search the house. They couldn't find her. This is a mock-up of the Anthony home, where you'll see they both came outside. Casey came around to the left of the house. George went that way towards the pool. They have an above ground pool with a ladder. As soon as Casey came around this corner and went back, she saw George Anthony holding Kaylee in his arms. She immediately grabbed Kaylee and began to cry and cry and cry. And shortly thereafter, George began to yell at her, look what you've done. Your mother will never forgive you and you will go to jail for child neglect for the rest of your freaking life. She cried and cried and asked for her father's help. And it was shortly thereafter that George did help. <clears throat> it's at this moment that Casey should have been stronger. Casey should have called 911. Casey should have done the right thing. And that's what she's guilty of. She's not guilty of murder. This is not a murder case. This is not a manslaughter case. This is a sad, tragic accident that snowballed out of control. Her death was covered up. Bertie came back that she wasn't guilty. I felt and say, this is justice for Kaylee. And I feel at peace with that. In the circuit court for the Ninth Judicial Circuit in and for Orange County, Florida, State of Florida versus Casey Marie Anthony. As to case number 2008, CF 15606-0. As to the charge of first degree murder, verdict as to count one, we the jury find the defendant not guilty, so say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, on this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated child abuse, verdict as to count two, we the jury find the defendant not guilty, so say we all, did it at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, this fifth day of July, 2011, signed four person. As to the charge of aggravated manslaughter of a child, Verdict is to count three. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, dated at Orlando, Orange County, Florida, this fifth day of July, 2011, signed for person. Would you lie to protect Casey? No, I would not. And the one thing that I know for a fact is I made those searches. I swore on that Bible. I'd swear on the Bible again today. I'd look everybody straight in the eye that I did not lie, and I will not lie at your home, correct? Um, which one? The desktop computer. Yes. And that is, it, where's the desktop computer located? It's um, now our spare room. It used to be Lee's bedroom. Okay. And the computer, everyone in the house has access to this computer? Yes. And who used the computer at the house? Um, everybody. Um, anybody that was at the house that needed to use it, or even friends of Casey's used the computer. Do you recall in March of 2008, you doing any types of searches for any items that might include chloroform? Yes. And could you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury why you did that? Well, I started looking at chlorophyll and um, I was concerned about um, my smallest Yorkie. We have two Yorkie puppies and the smallest one was having some issues where she was extremely tired all the time. And both of the dogs would eat the bamboo leaves out in the back. So I started looking up sources from the backyard that could potentially cause her to be more sleepy than it would affect the larger dog. And I started looking up chloroform, I mean chlorophyll, and then that prompted me to look up chloroform. 
Okay, now, I, I don't understand how you can get those two mixed up. Not getting them mixed up. If you look into chlorophyll, um, there's some bacteria associated with um, chlorophyll production. And um, looking up that, it comes from different um, species of plants that have red and brown um, coloring. And that prompted me to look up chlorophyll because some species of algae and seaweeds and stuff produce naturally chloroform. Okay. And how do you know that you ran these searches in March of 2008? Because I also ran a few other searches at the same time in March. Um, there was a scare about using hand sanitizers around small children. There was an email that went around my employee at my work. One of my nurses had sent me an email knowing that, you know, um, Kaylee was of age that she could be affected if we used hand sanitizer and she got her hands on it. And that scare came out in March. And during the same time that frame that I was looking up the issues about the dogs, I was looking up um, ingredients in the hand sanitizer, the um, alcohol. And then that prompted me to look up other things that we had in the house, like acetone, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing up. During the trial, I prayed every day. I said, Lord, if Casey's guilty, find her guilty.